Hello, this is Rebecca, and I have a Facebook group called Treadle Sewing Machines and More. And on there, I discuss all kinds of things that I do with the treadle. Today, I'm going to work on a doily. This is my first example. I wasn't really happy with this one, so I'm doing another completely over and with a different design. But I at least thought I would show you how this was sewn on my treadle and with water soluble paper and I washed it away and this is what I had left. But I'm going to do another design. Now I will be using this 40 weight Maxi Lock multicolored thread and I also put that in a bobbin. When you do a doily, you have to have the same thread in the bobbin as you do in your upper tension. So, these, this is the water soluble stabilizer that I use. This one is Wash and Gone. I purchased this off of Amazon. And then for my actual design, I also have purchased off of Amazon a water soluble paper. And I use this paper in my printer to print off designs. So this has actually been printed off of my printer. Now I don't have a book or resource that shows doilies uh, being made on your treadle, doing it the way that I'm doing it. The closest thing that I have come to find was this book, The Singer Instructions for Art and Embroidery. I don't know how that's going to show up for you. Um, but, you know, back in the day, we did not have all these water-soluble fibers. So what they would do is they would uh, use a thin material, sometimes organza or something, organdy, something similar, and then they would do their design and cut away just like in cut work lace. But this book does have a bunch of information on different types of lace making, but none of it tells you about using these water soluble stabilizers. At least that I know of, I haven't come across that in the book. And the patterns that I have um, tried to find, it's not like you can just look up treadle embroidery lace and find a bunch of patterns. This actually came from like a tatting pattern that I modified to make it workable for the treadle. So I'm going to put this in my hoop. Um, I have already threaded my machine, gotten this ready to put my hoop. I have this water stabilizer, this water um, paper, water soluble paper, and this is another water soluble paper. So I have three layers here of water soluble paper. And I went ahead and I did a basing stitch around it to try to just help hold it all together. And now I'm going to put that in my hoop. Now that I have this in the hoop, I'm gonna do a running stitch all the way around all the spots where the line is. Uh, because this is, you know, a little bit more delicate, I just want that stability right off. I'm not gonna go straight into doing the design until I have outlined the whole design. So just like with other embroidery, we pull our bobbin thread from the bottom to the top. Make sure our needle bar is down. I won't worry about you know, going off that a little bit. We can always trim that later. 
We're going to be going over lots of threads. But that does let me know, yeah, I need to slow her down a little bit. Right now I'm just trying to get it kind of evenly spaced out. Now watching my harp space, I'm getting kind of close, so I'm going to turn it. See, what's happening is, is I, I am hitting this edge here. I may need to put a plastic guard down, so I'm going to go back and do that. Okay, now I've put a slick mat underneath this that'll cover those hinges, so hopefully I will not be bumping that anymore. And I'm going to just continue just doing the running stitch just to kind of just lay everything down. back here and trim this. Now that I've kind of got it widespread, I'm going to start doing a little bit more detail and trying to go around on every single line. I know this is tedious, but it'll hold everything together. You're going to want to overlap those threads wherever they meet. still hitting the hinges, but it's a lot smoother than what it was. Sometimes if your thread is not going into it, I thought I had broke a thread, but I hadn't. It's just so pink. It was hard to see. But sometimes if your thread uh, pops up like how it did over here, just go a little bit slower and move your finger closer to it to hold it down a little bit. Sometimes that can happen because uh, your tension's not real strong, which you have to kind of be careful. You can't pull this like what you can regular material. You just can't really get it all that tight. So holding your fingers close to the needle does help with that. I'm going to continue on here with this circle of hearts. If I stay in one section, that'll help me to, you know, hopefully not overlook something. Be sure to take breaks often. You know, this can really be hard on your eyes and watch your posture. It can be hard on your back, hard on your knees. You know, it doesn't all have to be done in one sitting. go over this line a little bit because I got off there a little bit. I wanted to make it a little bit shorter, but because that, that seems like I drew it a little bit higher than that one, but you know, in the end, it'll all work out because you're going over those threads. It's not that big of a deal. You strive for perfection, but except you won't reach it because Nobody's perfect. I'm 
if you wanted to take out, you know, human error completely, you wouldn't be making your doilies. You would be buying them and let the commercial machines make them. One thing I don't like about this is the noise, the noise level of working with paper versus material. It is a lot noisier. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of break here. I'm gonna stop the camera. And I'm just gonna walk a little bit, just stretch out my knees and have a little bit of tea. I'll be back in a second. Okay, continuing on. As you can see, I've gone over the whole entire design at least once all over. Now it's time to come back and do like how I did with um, the cutwork lace, except for I'm not cutting anything. So I'm gonna handle one section at a time and embroider around the design. This is just kind of like my line to keep things together. <clears throat> Important thing is, is I'm gonna need these hearts edges to touch and connect so i will go a little outside of my design that i drew here to connect those and this is going to be a long tedious part but you know if you love it it's not too terribly tedious i won't make you watch the whole thing i'll do little tidbits of video clips as i progress and the thing is, is this is going to be a little bit uh, more delicate than doing it with an ma actual material in there. So I will have to be extra careful and mindful of tearing uh, the material that I have that I'm sewing on. See, I'm up against the heart space here. I'm as far back as I can go, so I'm gonna just hold my needle down and turn my work. Now here's the first heart that I completed with just the thread. Now if that's not enough definition for you and you want a little bit thicker cording, you can buy embroidery thread that's like this. This says that it's 10 mil. I don't wanna do this whole thing 
like this. But um, I'll do one line like across here so that you can see it and decide if you would rather do that. I just wanted to just make one completely nothing but my thread and not add any embroidery thread to it. But I can do this for you just so you can get a look and see how it would look. So I'll come here and I'll attach it. I'm gonna leave a little on the end so that I can trim it. Make sure my foot's down. I'm gonna put it right in the middle of it. I do have to pull up my thread from underneath. Pull that to the back. Hold my thread down there right where I want it. I'm gonna just secure it first. trim this too while I'm at it. Secure that in real good. pull this up here just so you can see it. So this here is where I did it with just the string. And then this here, I put the cording under it. I don't know if you can see that it has a little bit more definition in it. And honestly, I feel like that that looks better. But like I said, this is kind of, I just wanted to do one with just all thread. Well, it's Valentine's Day and I'm at the halfway mark with my lace. I had hoped to finish the whole thing, but you know, time restraints and things you've got to do. But I just wanted to share with you how far I've gotten on it. And I'll continue this labor of love for the rest of the day. Hopefully I can finish it by the end of the day. But I just wanted to share where we're at, do a little bit more, and ask you, what do you think about the variegated thread? Honestly, I'm not sure that I like it. I'm thinking that it might need a solid color. But maybe after I wet this down and all the stabilizer is removed, maybe then I'll like it. I don't know. And sometimes after I finish a project, I come back and look at it in a couple days, I feel differently about it. We'll see. But let's continue on just a little bit here. Let's continue on just a little bit here. See, I feel like the variegated shows every little step of your thread instead of it blending in well. And you know, that may not always be desirable. Okay, when I get to this other heart, I am gonna cross over into the other heart a little bit. Because that's gonna help join our work and make everything stay together. And of course, when I'm working on this heart, I will do it again. I 
I find going from side to side not my favorite way to do it. I like to trim my work. I feel like I get it a little bit smoother when I do that. I like going up and down better. Those angles are kind of killers. I'm trying to get it consistent. over here a little bit to attach that to the Give a little turn So that is the completion of that heart, and I'm gonna stop there. And when I'm finished, I will wet it, and it'll remove all of the stabilizer like how I did with this piece. I hope that you have a wonderful Valentine's Day, and thank you for sharing this time with me. Goodbye, God bless, and don't forget to pray.